All right, so here's the entire setup for my Hobie. This is the Compass 2019 12 foot. I've spent several years of fishing on it to figure out the most optimal way of setting it up. So that way I don't have to deal with, uh, you know, complicated stuff and things just kind of falling all over the place and getting confusing and annoying and frustrating while you're out on the water. So I'm gonna start at the front of the boat and work my way to the back. At the front, I have a feel-free cooler bag. I usually stuff some uh, frozen water bottles and uh, ice packs in here. This is mainly just to keep my lunch cool, keep my GoPro cool while the batteries are charging. To add to that, here is my GoPro battery charging setup. I have two GoPro batteries inside of the external charger hooked up to a battery pack and I stick it inside of this waterproof case. I've got extra SD cards, a phone charger in case I need it. This can also double as a GoPro charger since it is the same head. And this can get kind of warm while it's charging. So I do like to close it up, stick the battery inside and stick it in here to keep it out of direct sunlight, keep it out of the hull because inside of the hull it gets a little bit warm. So you wanna be careful with you know, sticking it in there and having that get overheated. Right here, we have the uh, ever important bail bucket slash um, peacup. Uh, I would recommend always having something like that and somewhere to put it easily on your kayak. This is the Yak Attack. Um, don't remember what model, I can include it right now on the video, but uh, I always keep these rear facing because I like to be able to take my rod and just place it right in there. I've got no reason to put them forward facing. I see a lot of people do that. I like this rod holder because I can put my fly fishing rod in here and it rests really nice on the edge right there. It can sit this way too. It has these grooves cut out in them that uh, the fly fish rod will lay in there. It won't bounce around. It sits where it needs to. I can lock it in place until I get to where I need to go unlock it and I've got a nice place that when I'm done fly fishing, if I hook into a fish, whatever that may be, I can uh, take this, stick it right in there, lock it down, and my fly fishing rod is safe for anybody who fly fishes regularly. You know why of all the rods to keep safe, the fly fishing rod is the main one. Continuing my way down the rest of the boat, I have my pedal system. There is a tether hook down inside of here. I hook a bungee tether. I put a little pad eye that screws onto the rail system. So that way I can clip these on here, lock them in. If anything happens, I'm not gonna lose those. You do not wanna lose these. <laughs> you don't wanna lose them. They don't fall out easily, but you definitely don't wanna lose them if they do. I put a um, pro angler bar. So this is the octagon pro angler bar. I think it's a 21 inch, stuck it on the side right here. It goes nice and flush from here to here, right before the, the steering thing. There's nothing under here that's gonna get in the way. So you're not gonna be drilling into any steering cables or anything that you need to concern yourself with there. I, uh, I used, so I was able to reach my hand up inside back here, screwed it down, 316 stainless steel. I used JB water weld around the edge. You don't need to. It's not necessary. I have nylon washers inside of there. It is clamped down hard enough that I know it's not going to leak water, but I still put the JB water weld on there just in case. This is the little Hobie crate that sits on the side, hooks right on here. Um, in the water, I would say that the water touches the bottom. There is no holes. It doesn't produce any drag that I've ever noticed. I don't think it causes any problems. It's easily accessible. I did have to replace the lines on mine because they were getting old. I've had this thing for a couple years now. I tend to keep all my tools inside of here right now. I just got fish grips and a thing of Pro Cure. I hooked this on here because I hate losing my scissors and my tools. My scissors are the things that I use the most. These are my favorite scissors. They are, what is this? Another American made. Comfort shear, stainless steel, 316 stainless. Not easy to find in scissors. I get them from a local bait and tackle shop who gets them from the uh, local chicken businesses who when they shear the dead chickens, you know, for processing, 
they end up buying these shears after they've been used for a while. So I clip them on so that way I've got my scissors where I need them when I need them on the water and I'm not going to lose them. I've lost enough of these and I don't feel like magnet fishing to go get them back. Though I could, but they're probably gone. The tide tends to move pretty quick around here. Inside of this bag, a lot of people forget this when they go out on the water. Keep towels in here, several towels. I use my old car washing terry towels and microfibers. Once they get dirt on them, I don't want them touching the paint of the car again. So I stick them inside of a rag bucket. I clean them up a little bit for myself so they don't stink, they're not too dirty. Stick them inside of here, roll this up, shove it somewhere on the kayak. It gives me enough hand towels for the day that I can keep my hands nice and clean while I'm fishing. Right here I have the map pocket installed. Make sure that if you order a map pocket, get it with the plastic frame around it. You can't install these without the plastic frame. You will mess it up. Also of note with the map pocket, this is something I did not know with my previous Hobie compass. But if you look on here in this spot, you probably won't be able to see it. Let me actually get my flashlight. So if you look right here in this spot, there's a little dimple. These dimples mark where the map pocket would install. So right there, and you've got another dimple right there. So keep those in mind. That's where your top two screws for your map pocket are going to install. Center hatch, I keep my personal belongings in here. Um, this is like my phone, my wallet, other important things like that. I just hook a carabiner and a bungee cord to one of the foam block zip ties so that it doesn't slide all the way back. Not that it really would anyways, but just keeps it secure for me. I have the Scotty cup holder attached with the, there's a sticky mount underneath that the Scotty cup holder attaches to. This is an excellent addition because this cup holder right here is completely useless without this. This is just a frustrating pain in the butt until you get the proper cup holder installed. I have an anchor trolley installed here. Runs from front to back, um, installed by Hobie's standards, how they tell you to do it. There's plenty of videos telling you how to install those to go ahead and look up. These are two of the Yak Attack Roto Grips for my paddle. These hold the paddle nice and secure for me. Um, I typically don't use my paddle unless I absolutely need to, but you should always have it ready because you never know when you're going to need to use it. This is my stakeout pole strapped to the side using this hook. I would not recommend using this setup for your paddle. It's a pain in the butt. You will rip your fingers up. It's just awful because the paddle pushes this out too much. It gets too tight. Unless you want to extend these bungees by reaching your hand down in there and retying them, I wouldn't use this for your paddle right here. Um, I use it for my stakeout pole. My stakeout pole is set up where I have, I've wrapped the head of it with tennis racket tape. And this is an old crab pot buoy that I found in the grass flats, just sitting in the flats, old and dirty, but I cleaned it up a little bit. Makes it so that if I ever drop my stakeout pole, it'll float. I use the Stolquist Fisherman Life Vest. It's a great, super light life vest. Works really well with this seat. Keeps your back up, you know, keeps your back nice and cool because it's got that nice opening. So the lumbar support on the seat comes in contact with your lower back, not with the life vest. That's really helpful for when you're out there for a full day's fishing. Next is my rod holder extenders. These have a tendency to slip out. These are the Calcutta brand ones. They were five bucks. I didn't feel like spending money on the Hobie ones. They're way too expensive. You could also just use PVC pipes if you want. They fit in here loosely. I have a little bungee cord that makes it so that when I pull something out, the rod holder doesn't come out with it. I keep this net in here in the rod holders usually. Um, keeps it nice and accessible. This is not the perfect setup. I could do it better. I just don't know how. It's probably something that I'm going to explore improving in the future. I really like this net though because it floats really well and it's just a super well-made, you know, rubber net. I honestly, I got it at the Academy. I couldn't tell you what brand it is. Maybe I can look it up on their website and post a model number or something along with it. 
this is my crate set up, milk crate. It is the bottom of one milk crate sitting on top of another full milk crate. So I just took and cut the bottom off with a roto zip. I attached a dock cleat right here. So I could take a bungee cord, put it over there. So it's not wide open, but I can open it up. I put some holes over here, punched the holes through, ran the paracord down, tied knots, made a nice little floppy lid that works. It's secured with this one through this side, through another knot, so that way it doesn't open all the way up. This is a bag from the back of a folding chair that we threw away. Um, this is where I just kind of stuff leader material and other random things. Um, that I want to keep around, but I don't feel like having cluttering up my regular tackle box. I have my first aid kit in here. We will go over what I keep inside of this Pelican 1200. We'll go over what I keep in there in a little bit. This is how I secure my tackle box. I got two bolas that are two stretchy bolas that are um, tied together using a surgeon's loop underneath the crate so they can slide back and forth but not through. I put down my tackle box. I pull these up and over and clip them. If I'm gonna be going somewhere far, they don't fall off and I don't lose a lot of tackle. My tackle is also attached by this bungee right here. Open this up and go through that in a little bit. Last is my fish cooler. I don't like storing fish in the front. That's not a good cooler. It's okay for keeping things at around room temperature on a super hot day. It's not a cooler that'll keep it cold. These on the other hand, these little Ozark Trail backpacks, backpack coolers. They're not very expensive and they are awesome coolers. So my cooler is held in with two carabiners. Um, I should actually have it turned around. I forgot about that. Either way, this Ozark Trail would face forward, so that way I can reach the zipper. I can unzip it. This is gonna have ice inside of it. Fish go in. This is probably gonna be reworked. I do like this cooler. I have a second Ozark Trail cooler up there. That one has a harder time fitting though, so I might get a, I might take another look at that in the future. But anyways, let's get to my tackle bag and see how that's set up. This is a Plano roll-up tackle bag. I think I got it for $15 at one of my local outdoor stores. I keep pretty much everything in here. They roll out super nicely. I've got my soft baits up here. Um, all my soft baits are at the top. You know, my everything even from my Amazon, super cheap soft baits that I have. I keep my hard baits in here. These are my jig heads and various hook types. These are where I keep my voodoo shrimp. These are where I keep my casting spoons and my tools and my fly gear stays down in this one, as well as my leader and I've got some extra pro cure and some extra treble hooks. The way that I store my hard baits, and I haven't really seen this done before. I went on Amazon and I did some searching around and I found jewelry bags. These are PVC jewelry bags. I'll have to look up the exact dimensions. I'll post them on the video right now um, as far as the thickness of the PVC. These are fairly thick. They have a little zipper on top and I keep all of my hard baits inside of there. The hooks do not puncture through. They don't tangle up with each other. I can keep them separate. I think I got 50 of these for eight bucks or something like that. That's probably not completely correct. I can post the actual price in there right now. But uh, these make it just so easy to store all of my hard baits. They're not a tangled up mess. They can all fit easily in here. They're easy to find. I can see them. They go right inside of there, Velcroed in. They're not going anywhere. I do the same thing with stuff like my voodoo shrimp. I got some DOAs in here. I've got my voodoo shrimp, different types, all in these little bags. It's kind of like having a collection of, uh, of playing cards. Here are my casting spoons and ocean rigs for when I go out on the boat fishing for Spanish and stuff like that. So I got them wrapped up in there. I got the leaders in there with that guy. I got my little smoothie in here. Got my trolling spoons, other setups, just everything. I keep them all inside of those bags. 
they're really easy to keep track of if you lose them you're not going to be upset you know they're just uh a cheap little thing that you can kind of keep a rolling stock of whenever you need them and tackle organization is huge we all know that we all deal with it very likely on a daily basis if you're out there on the water a lot okay so that guy's back where he belongs now let's get into the first aid kit inside of the first aid kit and this is very important for anybody who's going to be spending an extended period of time or any amount of time on the water there's a couple things that you should always always have with you other than just water and an extra little bit of food you know while you're out there water is extremely important let me say that again water is very important i have spent eight hours on my kayak once actually a couple weeks ago i took a gallon of water with me inside of this thing I had another 32 ounces inside of a vacuum sealed cup. I drank all of it. So one gallon, 32 ounces of water in about eight hours. By the time I was off the water, I wasn't thirsty, but I was thinking to myself, I had to get off the water because I was about to run out of water. If you're fishing in salt water, especially, and in direct sunlight all day, bring plenty of water. So in here, I have Neosporin. Benadryl in case you get stung, some Tylenol, some galls, Bactine relieves the burn if you get burned, if you get poked, prodded, whatever. Plenty of Band-Aids, more Neosporin, that's kind of overkill, more Band-Aids. Finger splints, if you break a finger, you're going to have a lot of trouble if you don't have some way to hook it up. Keep some finger splints with you. In case you get lost, keep a little air horn with you. You can take it in there, screw it on, got yourself an air horn, and an emergency. Glow sticks, six inch snap lights. You can get these on Amazon. Sialum. These also Amazon. New Millennium Energy Bars. They don't taste that bad. They're actually pretty freaking good. 400 calories in one bar. I keep two of them. They're vacuum packed. I'm pretty sure they last forever. I keep them inside of here. One method of lighting a fire. Two methods of lighting a fire. Three methods of lighting a fire. Duct tape roll. Well, Gorilla Tape in this instance. Medical tape. Thread. Hot glue. Comes in handy with the fire. Micro screwdriver. And way of maintaining a fire. A tea light. If you only have matches to work off of, you can save yourself some matches by having a tea light rather than lighting 20 matches trying to get your fire going. Light one match, start the tea light, work from there. I keep one tea light in here. I could probably keep a few more. I have a few more. Um, in fact, I might just throw you know another one in here. Could be helpful. Life straw, rainwater, any water that you might find on an island. If you're out there in salt water, you can't use this in salt water. It will not work, at least as far as I know. Somebody comment below if they know differently. Since I'm on the Hobie Compass, anybody who's had a Hobie Compass for an extended period of time knows about these things. These are the pad eyes that go into the seat holder. When your seat is up, this hook is gonna connect to this pad eye. These pad eyes are made of plastic. They have a tendency to break over time. You should keep two of them because once they go out, your seat doesn't work anymore. And without a working seat, your pedals are pretty much useless. So all this stuff fits in here. I do also have a whistle. I keep a whistle on me. So in my life vest, I keep paddle gloves. Um, UV, you know, it hurts. Survival blanket, emergency survival blanket. Folds up this big. This thing is big enough to cover your entire body. I could probably drape it over top of part of the kayak and keep myself warm if I absolutely needed to. Survival mirror, I. You point this thing at what you need to look at, you flash them, signal, way to signal. I have a jet scream um, whistle. I need to find it and put it in here. It's usually always in here. I don't know why it isn't. So I'm gonna locate that and make sure that it gets into my kit. But other than that, that's my kayak from front to back. 
I can go over my rods at a later date. Um, I figured they're probably not too important for this video since it's mainly just showcasing the kayak itself. I try to keep as much of this deck area clear as possible while I'm out fishing. I don't like to have anything at my feet. Sometimes I'll tuck something right in here, which will be underneath my legs while I'm paddling. Um, but the compass really doesn't give you that much room for storing things and moving things around. You really got your room for your feet. I'll keep my Crocs right up here, just outside of the pedals, um, you know, range of motion. That's not a terrible place to set it up. Um, but other than that, yeah, don't, don't use too many ropes. Don't keep too many things secured. Remember that if you flip your kayak over, in some cases, if you have every single tool that you own, your D hookers, your pliers, your scissors, if every tool is connected to a bungee, when you flip your kayak over, all those bungees are gonna be hanging down, they're gonna be in the water, they're gonna be impeding your ability to flip your kayak back over and get back inside of it. So just bear that in mind. Do not hook everything that you have to your kayak. I typically keep the things that I can't function without. These, I only ever keep one tool in here. So if I'm using my D hooker a lot, my scissors will go somewhere else, or sometimes I won't have anything at all hooked to this and I'll use this bungee for something else. But I definitely keep this and this attached to my kayak because if I lose those, well, you know, even if you flip your kayak back over, you're gonna be stuck wherever the hell you are. As far as videos go for me lately, I've been kind of busy with other things. Uh, I had an entire period where uh, I just wasn't feeling like talking and recording videos. You know, I just wasn't in the mood to upload, so I didn't. I'm trying to get back into that again, I'm trying to get my kayak back out on the water, trying to get my boat back out there. I've been out a lot. I'm hoping to catch some more fish, hoping to showcase them, hoping to let you guys see. I do this mainly for my friends and family, so anybody who out there who sees it, you know, just know that I'm still on the water. I'm still doing my thing. I'm just uh, not recording it as much as I used to. I'm gonna try doing it more. So there we go. And uh, there goes the Hobie. You guys will see me out there on it. All right, everybody have a good day.